YouTube, I'm back again for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different Kickstarter tabletop game project every weekday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and give my honest thoughts on how that Kickstarter project is being ran. And today, I'm very excited to be checking out the third most popular game and the uh, sixth most popular project on all of table... or on all Kickstarter right now, that is Title Blades 2, Rise of the Unfolders, plus the Cypher System RPG. Now, this one's interesting to me. Two different games, One Great World, a campaign-based dungeon crawler board game, a dot, dot, dot. Now, the original Title Blades was a game that I played. I thought it was very good. My buddy Brandon got it. But it was like it was like one of those ones that it was so much to set up, and there was so much to learn, and there was just so much that I didn't know if the game necessarily uh, did it for me as much as it's done for other people. Now, it's still one of the top 1,000 board games of all time, I do believe, which is super impressive. This is something completely different, though, a campaign-based dungeon crawl. And what I'm trying to get to here is I love the fact that they mention that right in the marquee, because how many people would say, oh, yeah, I remember Title Blades. I remember that board game. I wasn't, you know, super interested then. Or I don't know something about it now. But... And think that this is just like an expansion or something. But you went out of your way to let me know it's something completely different, which I think is super good idea here. That being said, I'd love to know the player link, the time count, the age. All that good stuff would be fantastic here. Also, good morning, everyone, and cheers from Canada. Hello, Canada. I'm excited to hear your thoughts on Tidal Blades. Canada, I do love Canada. Uh, anywho. And it's huge. Oh my gosh. You. Uh, this sounds... I'm such a noob. I didn't realize how huge Canada was until Wednesday night. Yeah. Anywho, let's get back into this. As always, when you get into the video, I'm thinking three things. Do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? Let's go. I used to dream of flying over Nibiri. So we're going straight theme. And I will say, when you're going with a campaign dungeon crawler and a role-playing game system, because they're, they're doing both those at one time, they're taking a huge swing, a huge bite here, I love seeing that, I can understand there being more thematic flavor here than we might typically see in just a board game, but hopefully they do still show me components and gameplay and whatnot. I would glide past the subtitles i love it i have no problem hearing the narrator right now but the still putting subtitles i always think is a great idea glorious arenas wave to merchants on the floating docks now a little behind the scenes here because i've actually played the original base game that gave me some very thematic flavors from the original game and actually reminded me of the game despite the fact that i think i've only played it once or twice so i do think there's definitely some good fan service here and they're building a world which you gotta love to see i love seeing that sort of stuff so peaceful i felt so safe but now that i'm here in nibiri i understand that peace came with a price a battle fought by tidal blades before us this time, the fight is ours. Choose your hero. That looks so good. Oh, that was nice. I didn't even read the words. It was so nice. And embark on an epic adventure. And I feel like they did a great job of showing me the thickness about the size of the storybook and then hopefully turning pages. Oh, construct. Whoa. So there's map books and there's the adventure books, which I really kind of like. That's That feels a little bit less clunky than just having it all in one. So I really do like that. And I like the fact they spotlighted that. Good evening from Germany. Good evening, John. That's cool. <laughs> oh, focus on the gorgeous minis. But I love the fact that they showcased the board, uh, the components, a lot of the other stuff before we got to the minis. It's not the primary focus here, which I got to love seeing because I'm here for the gameplay, not for the minis. Ooh, what is that? That looks That looks so user friendly. I wanna I wanna I wanna I'm gonna double take on this. That looks oh my gosh, it's like roll and write esque, but obviously not even close because it's for the game. That looks really good. Customize your deck. Fight like a title blade. 21 immersive scenarios. And I love the fact that they're showcasing how, yes, oh, we might even bring this book into it to create some seriously epic, you know, locations, encounters, and locales. And that's that just unlocks so much potential, you know, for, for what I want for this campaign game. I think this is a really well done video. Like, they focus on the theme for, like, like I think about the right amount of time, and then just bam, right into the gameplay. Not gameplay, I should say components. And I 
also like what they did there. They just showed me pretty much pledge levels. There's going to be just the game. There's going to be just the game plus the mini set. There's going to be just the game plus the mini set plus the role playing game. You know, and and so I like the fact that they show like just with that one shot, they told me information, and I love that. And if you want to go deeper, get the role playing game. There's more. I'm super excited for the next 27 seconds. Like you've hyped me up. Like the game, I thought was like okay, I want to play this. It looks good. Looks gloomhaven-y, you know, and I'm down for that sort of thing. But now they're spotlighting what else they want to sell. And I think a lot of companies don't do this really well. I see this a lot on Kickstarters where it feels like an expansion or something else that they really want to sell is not spotlighted particularly well in the video. So I'm glad that they're doing this. Ooh, wow. A role-playing core book using the award-winning Cypher system. Like, this is fantastic. Like, this is great. Fourteen playable species. Limit. Oh, that's pretty. And that tells me there's probably going to be an add-on where I can buy that map. <laughs> like, because I want that map. Okay. So, I feel like that was a really well done video. And I, I kind of like the fact that they didn't try and just mush up the role-playing game and the board game. And gave them each their own little, you know, snip, uh, their own section of the video. You know, a minute 30 of the board game. 30 sec actually it was like 30 seconds of it felt like it was 30 seconds of theme a minute for the board game and then 30 seconds for the role play game and i feel like that felt about right uh really grabs your attention with the color change Ooh, didn't notice that but yeah that's the kind of thing that i don't i don't have that sort of eye but yeah that orange was very blinding uh so druid city games eight created 1066 packs druid city games works with some of today's best board game designers artists and developers to create board games that you will enjoy playing with your friends and families for many years we strive for high level production quality and work closely with our teams from start to finish to provide outstanding game experience and we have awesome we have two of the designers on here and then we have david and lena so we have some should have some great customer service going on right here let's check out the track record always got to do that uh bloodstone that one was cancel wonderland's war title blade heroes of the reef which was the expansion that had solo mode thank you for making that so clean and clear exactly what that is sorcerer city uh guardians call so i'm just seeing how many of these are still out pending and then grim force i'm 99 percent sure yeah that one's out i do know that one's out so this one's candled so whatevs uh canceled after reaching 240,000 more than it needed but some people are not going to like that. So that is what it is. Updates. Title Blades 2 Rising and Folder Cyphers, the system RPG on Kickstarter. Now shipping updates. Hope that those of you who have already received your copies of Wonderland's Ward have been enjoying the tea parties. Wanted to give a short update on the shipping timelines. And this was this was a couple weeks ago. So that one is out. So that one's out. And this one was older than that one. So I imagine this one is out as well. Uh, new launch date, RPG show, Title Blades. Yes, they're not even talking about it. So this must just be totally out. Yeah, yeah. So, awesome. Feel comfortable. Can you do it? 100%. No worries there. Do I want it? Yeah, I, I do. I want to know more gameplay. I feel like maybe that's the one thing that I would really like to have seen more in that game was like, what exactly am I going to do? I get the vibe that it's like, you know, go around, beat crap up, level up sort of thing, but maybe just a little bit more. Welcome to very a peaceful paradise full of promise and in dire need of heroes. This campaign for teachers, two standalone games. Okay. I like the fact that we're getting straight down to business here and letting me know exactly what this game is because I thought I knew what this game is and I just, now you're reaffirming this. And especially if I didn't watch the video. I keep hearing about this game but I have not dug into anything about it yet. Rise of the Unfolders is a cooperative, narratively rich board game featuring 21 immersive scenarios and over 40 hours of gameplay. Well then have a seat, Sean. Let's learn together. It's got the minis set going on right here. Okay, so it is. It's 21 immersive scenarios over 40 hours of gameplay. Uh, one to four players, 14 plus, 69 minutes to play. That's the one thing that I was looking for. Uh, I'm glad they got to that relatively early, but I think that should be on the marquee. Standalone. This is a standalone sequel. While it is set in the same world as the first title Blades that follows the same characters, it was designed as a completely distinct experience. Okay? I like the fact they're mentioning that. Then we go to the role-playing game. Monty Cook Games, game designed by this uh, Shanna Germain, Cypher System, art and world building by Mr. Cuttington, who is also in the... Uh, the collaborators. Title Blades Role Playing Game is a massive 400 page core book designed and partnered with the Monty K. Okay, cool. Got it. Good stuff. Praise for the original Title Blades. Okay, so they're saying why people 
Uh, why should be excited about this? I do like focusing on this. Released in 2020, Title Blitz of the Reef won Best Artwork of the Year and Best Production Value. It was currently ranked among the top 1% of board games on Board Game Geek. Now, that's how you do it. That's how you spotlight your pedigree. Super clean, super simple, super easy. Like, how hard was that? And I see game companies who don't do that. Like, like this, okay. It's a fantastic game. Right there. According to Board Game Geek, it's a fantastic game. Uh, Rise of the Unfolders. And that's all you have to do is just let me know. Choose your heroes. All five hero backers are... All five hello and heroes are back. They get their many. They get their cool things. Embark on missions. Get ready for 21 cooperative scenarios that will test your team spirit. Fight like a title blade. Uh, I guess you did kind of mention that. I didn't quite get what it was, but it looked cool. Explore the city. Every few missions, you get a chance to spend time in the city. Use this opportunity to visit the Citadel Research Lab, buy new items in the desert market, and interact with NPCs. Interesting. Getting much more of a story arc there. I like that sort of thing, because that was my favorite parts of Gloomhaven, is when you get those cards and you have to make different decisions. I really like that. Dynamic progression. Each character has two personal pathways that express their duality. Complete personal goals and scenario objectives to unlock new cards, upgrade your traits, and gain valuable skills interesting very very cool so i'm just looking for the price at this point only here for the book the kickstarter page is color coded if you want to learn about crafting your own adventure in naviri scroll down to the orange section wow that's really that's really nice that's really nice for everybody i love that yeah let's can we do this can this be industry standard if you're selling like two very distinct things that's great. The story. Title Blades features a rich and immersive nurse. Let's recap the stuff, the thing about the thing. I just want to know the price. Five player to care. So this is the game if you're not getting the miniatures. Okay. So how? So great how the color highlight the RPG in orange while the board game is blue. Makes it much easier to navigate. Agreed. Plus Broncos colors. Go Broncos. Uh, and this. Cool. This is great. I want this game. I'd like to know the price of this game. Because I'm sure this game is probably pretty reasonably priced with no minis. Three map books. Great. Over 60 unique pages. Each of the 21, 21 different scenarios is its own unique location. The maps are intricately detailed. I love, I love this shot. And full of secrets to explore. I like the use of color to divide which content belongs to board game or RPG book, especially with the amount of stuff they show agreed. The book includes a map of the city and which lets you explore various locations. Wow. I'm in. This looks fun. And interact with in NPCs, 18 encounter cards, one scenario book with over 100 pages of illustrated narrative special rules and setup instructions. Boy, howdy. More than 70 total standees. <laughs> wow. With 16 clear plastic bases. Who says, who says standees can't be sexy? Look at this. This is a long, sexy scrolling shot of standees, and I love it. Give me this all day, because I bet this is going to have a much more reasonable price tag than a lot of other retail, retail, I, I don't know if it's going to retail, but the retail edition of the game. Uh, 25 dice, 1 initiative track, over 200 tokens, 12 wound cards, the 16 battle scars, the 2 enemy health trackers, more than 120 enemy cards, 20 unique enemy types. You're buttering me up so much, just hit me with the price. And even more secret content, but we won't spoil, we won't spoil it all for you. So pretty much... They're saying there's going to be tons of, there's potentially tons of more content that's going to be here, but we're only going to show you a select amount. And I'm totally fine with that because the amount they showed me was great. I just need to know the price. And zoomed in, yes, very nicely zoomed in. And so now we get to the miniature set. What's in the box? Deluxe Fire Game with the miniature set, a separate box containing beautiful silver shells, squishy Maran fruit, 30 sculpts, uh, unique sculpts, and over 70 total miniature silver shells. Those are nice. So this is a component upgrade. Um, deluxe resources, you get the characters, you get the NPC, 50 creatures, and then unlockable ones, mystery ones that we're going to see. Psst, Kickstarter links in your vid is incorrect. Thank you, Sean. I will fix that after this. Uh, the upgrade pack contains only five heroes and deluxe editions. Exclusive scenario is not included in the retail game. Wow. So that's big. That is gameplay. And I, and I, and there's honestly that to me, I think is enough for a lot of people. If the difference between the retail and the Kickstarter edition is any sort of gameplay for the most part, I think that's what really is going to move the needle for people, especially if it's stuff that they can't get after the fact or just get let. I, I feel like, but that's the big one back now to get four exclusive scenarios. There's standalone side quests that you can attempt after the main story. 
Uh, so yeah, these are four, four different scenarios. Can you capture the beast that roams at night? Includes a new two-level map, Ravage Remo's Dock, Gargangela Oversized Boss. So it comes with a mini. Wow, so they're not just giving us scenarios. Keep an eye on your scroll bar when you find the pledge tier. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm worried about that. Uh, all the, but I guess there might be a lot of pledge levels because you're offering three separate products. You're offering a collection of minis, you're offering a board game, and then you're offering a role-playing game. So I, I can understand why there'd be a lot of pledge levels, if there is. Second exclusive scenario, Panic at Lamari. Wow. So this is like some good meat they're adding here. Like you are, Third exclusive scenario revealed March 28th. So yeah, if I'm a fan, I most definitely want to go check out this. And then this is exciting. And this is like its own separate expansion, I bet. I bet this is just going to be an expansion box that has four extra things that they sell off on the side. But that's fine with me. I don't even care. Like, that's nice. Uh, Daily reveals. Every day at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we'll reveal new content and dive deeper into the world of Naviri. So every day at 1 o'clock, you're going to want to potentially check this out. I like this. I like this. It's very exciting stuff. I just want the price still. Uh, so what have we unlocked? And look at this. It's going to be, su and I bet we're going to get to the price. Eventually, at this point, we got to get to the price. You buttered me up enough. Day one training grounds, a fully replayable scenario. We can undertake challenges in the Chronos team against heroes and battle monsters. Okay. Uh, day two, panic at Lamara. Jump on your trusty watercraft and rev your engines to save. And then, oh, so I like how they're showing me. So that's going to be unfolded. Oversized three maps in length. Awesome. Day five, three new bronze cards. Or, uh, help us design two of them by submitting your ideas on Board Game Geek. Whoa! Yes, yes, yes. Submitting your ideas on Board Game Geek. Why is that important? Because that potentially gets you onto the Board Game Geek hotness, which is going to get a lot of eyes on your game. Very nice. Um, I'm typically, and I wish this was clickable. I wish this was clickable. Like, that's one thing. Boom. Just send me exactly to the thread or to the page where I will submit my ideas, and I would do one right now. Uh, really gorgeous game. Definitely want to keep coming back, and I probably won't even back it, but I want to see. He's so buttered up, he's ready to just be put in the oven already. Well, I just... And here's the thing. I think the price is probably going to be on the mark, too, especially because I I think that retail edition looks pretty hot. Or the... Not the retail edition, but the Kickstarter exclusive basic edition. Let me clarify there. All right. Anyway, so we got what? And then you got John... Welcome to John the and his beautiful voice teaching the game. Awesome. You know? Good. And, and that's the first video they lead with. How to play. Feels great. Read Because I could watch this. I could literally sit there for about 30 or 40 minutes while I'm doing my dishes. And I've done it before. I just did it for Tabanusi last week. And he does such a fantastic job. I think that's a great video to lead off with. Read the rule booklet. The rule booklet of Title Blades is a working document. It does not reflect the quality of the final rule booklet. We have previews. Watch the preview. Uh, I don't like this. Watch the pre like. Give me, give me something. Give me a quote. Give me a tease. Don't just send me there. Something. What they say. What they like. What they love. You know, I don't want to have to click on these, especially not if I'm mobile. So a solo live stream with Jerry. Oh, so we, these are live streams. That's that's awesome as well. Solo live streams coming up. We got scheduled things coming soon it's a, it's an exciting little area here in itself if you're if you're a fan of this game and you're chomping the bits to see more april 4th they're spread out delightful and now we pivot the only thing that i have had an issue with this so far is the three questions do i want it yeah i do you did a great job on the video pedigree's great you spotlighted your pedigree can you do it yeah I feel totally comfortable how much is it i have no damn idea we're beating around the bush just my, my wallet's open and now we pivot to orange the role-playing game I, so i feel like a price somewhere had like ugh. uh the role-playing game because once again why i always say this and people have posted in the comments time and time again which is why i bang my drum on it because the majority of people who browse kickstarter now browse on mobile if i recall correctly and in mobile that's an extra click they have to make to see your rewards it should be there should be a fun pledge level area with add-ons in your story and maybe there is still, but it's buried, I would say, at this point. Craft your creatures, all the lore. Yeah, this looks great. I want to do it. How to play. Whoa! Uh, I, never, I, did, I didn't realize there were how to play videos in role-playing games, because that is because I've only done it like four times. RPG Season 1. Watch a full adventure by table story. Create, that's fantastic. Oh, delightful. We have found our way. Great. The role-playing game. What's in the book? I'm sold. Just hit me a price. 
Four character types, 14 species, things, stuff, great, good, golly. This is great. Like, this looks like its own, like, if they ran their own separate role-playing game Kickstarter, this looks solid, except I just need the price. Exclusive experience deck. Back now and get a free XP deck. So they're even, you know, getting a little bit of the fear, uh, fear of missing out on the RPG crowd. And then here we go. We finally get to the pledge cheers. Buried all the way at the bottom. Not a fan of that. So $1 pledge manager access. Love it. We got 1,061 people sitting here, sitting on the fence. or potentially, you know, just doing some weird wonky shopping where they're mixing and matching. PDF book, 25 bucks. 57 backers. That seems... Okay. I don't... I don't know if that seems low or high because I honestly am drawing a blank right now. I haven't done an RPG in a while. Uh, the RPG book, the physical copy of it, 110. So I do know that that definitely seemed low. Which means this is probably not hitting the mark super hardcore with the RPG crowd. Uh, which is a little bit of a bummer. I was hoping that this would be... Because uh, I, I felt like they did a decent job of the video spotlighting at the end. But, look at it from the perspective, if you are a fan of just the RPG system, and you came here, and it was just like, you watched the first minute, minute, you know, minute and a half, you're like, oh, I'm done with this. I wanted to know about the RPG thing. They didn't even spotlight in the video. It's spotlighted at the end. I don't know, maybe teasing that it's going to be at the end or something? I don't know. So, But $89 for the standard game. Okay. So it's $29 more than the MSRP. So now I'm kind of annoyed because I am going to have to go all the way back up here because I didn't think it was going to be that expensive with the uh, with the non-minis version. And that's just because I've been trained. You know, the, the, the retail version of the game is normally very reasonably priced because nobody wants it. But let's see what, how many people wanted the $89. So 275 It's almost a 500 print run. Okay. Uh, Rise of the Unfolders. It comes with the standees. And then this one, is this going to, yeah, then the four free exclusives for backers. Okay. And then everybody wants the board games plus the upgrades, I'm assuming. No, 342. Interesting. What's the one that everybody wants? The deluxe. Oh, the deluxe. Okay, duh. That's the one that everybody wants. Which is 1,410 backers. And then the deluxe board game and the RPG. And they got 767. Okay, so those numbers are skewed. I take that back. So that so there's 767 of those books right there, which tells me that, yeah, I think that's great. If it was five eBay to spend, there will be more pledges for the book. Oh, Garrett, thank you. I did not realize that that was not 5e, because I know that moves the needle for a lot of people. And that immediately would turn some people off, from what I've read, in some of my chat down in the comments below about this stuff. Um... Once again, not an RPG expert. One day I'm going to dip my toes into that. Okay, so that's much better. So they're selling around a thousand of those books already in a couple days. That's great. Okay, awesome. I can forgive the price being so low. They did everything else fantastic. They did. I would agree with that. Uh... Oh, shipping. Yeah. Whew. Oh, so oh, back, back to the... This is the add-on section. Okay. The deluxe game of the RPG book plus 500 bucks for retailers. Art print set desk mat rpg core book dice set gm screen character portfolios map books oh these are for your rpg locations that's cool minis set okay i got the pdf would love to get the book but almost a hundred dollars to get the just the book with shipping is a bit much that does seem like a bit much shipping the shipping price here estimates of what will believably closer to accurate next year when fulfillment begins. These are just estimates and prices could fluctuate. We have subsidized these shipping prices and we're really happy with what we were able to offer considering the size and weight of the game. Twelve and a half pounds for the standard game. Okay. Eighty eighty nine dollars. I'm in. We're good. Here's so here's what I would do there. Uh the eighty nine dollars. If that is I put twelve and a half pounds. I would put twelve and a half pounds right here. Or no, right there. 12 and a half pounds of gaming goodness. Like, at that point, I say, okay, the $60 MSRP is clearly not going to be on the table for a 12 and a half pound game. And then I actually say the price seems like a pretty reasonable price. You know, it seems like it's a premium game. It's got a whole bunch of campaigns. It got the Kickstarter exclusives. Anywho, shipping. So I'm getting $109 now for this game, minus the minis. The RPG book, 10 bucks to ship. That seems like. Seems like, it does, that doesn't seem like a particularly good deal to me. Uh, United Kingdom, United Kingdom, uh, Europe Zone, 15, 20, 29. Okay. Deluxe game, the upgraded game, 24, 24, 20. But then again, yeah, shipping sucks. Uh, deluxe game plus the RPG. This is a great shipping section. I do like this. It's very clean and clear. I'd like to convert the currencies maybe for some places. But other than that nitpick, this has 
all the different pledge levels and all the different pledge levels have their own different shipping section which is beautiful because that is not something i would say honestly when you get to projects that are like have a whole bunch of pledge levels it's now i'd say about this point 50 50 whether or not they're actually going to have all the different shipping prices for all the different pledge levels 40 plus hours of gaming in the base box holy hot diggity dog i'd put that there james hudson up in the chats if you got any questions feel free to pop them in there shipping prices are also pretty good yeah i'd say it looks pretty damn reasonable i like the shipping section though uh add-ons where's the only, the only thing that i haven't seen is the vat Next year, VAT, VAT, just looking for the words. Shipping for add-ons, it's like a word search now. VAT, the cost of shipping along with VAT and applicable taxes will be collected during the pledge manager. The exact cost will be based on your region and address. Uh, okay, so I think that's the one where they're indifferent. It's not the, That's the one where at least they're not going to have to go to the post office to pay the VAT, which I think is a good thing. Uh, and once again, I do apologize. I have to get some of my international friends to fill me in on that one. Instagram, Board Game Geek, Facebook, newsletter, credits, Rise of the Unfolders, the role-playing game, lots of stuff, Kickstarter video, risk and challenges. Okay. Let's get to check out the FAQ, the updates, the comments, and let's get out of here on this one. But yeah, I think, look, this is really solid grade here. Uh, just the price being so, so low. But other than that, like, it was a fun ride. Will this be translated in any foreign languages? The Kickstarter will be in English only. Will Tidal Blades 1 Deluxe be offered as an add-on? No. Currently, the answer is no. We priced a reprint, but the pricing of making games has gone up substantially since we made the first game. We also need, and yeah, and if you've never seen the first game, it is a behemoth of a game with tons and tons of components and minis and good dude, stuff like that. But, you know, to do an entire extra print run of that, based purely on the speculation that there's going to be enough interest from people who are already spending, you know, $150, $200 and that they're just going to be able to plunk on that extra $100 to $150, that's a really risky business <laughs> investment there. So I understand that uh updates so what do we got Woo! 96 hearts 28 comments 96 73 look at you james getting those numbers love it all right let's see what's going on uh as we approach 4,000 backers we've noticed that some of y'all are brand new to title blades and could use a little catch up on the narrative to see how we got here so the team put together a high level graphic for you let's get you up to speed and whoever is making your graphics like hold on to them They're, those are really really good all right, so we're talking about theme, five new bronze card. Today's reveal is, oh, this is the one o'clock reveal. Nice. So cool, engineer assemble. We want your ideas. That's right. We're going to design two of these cards with your inspiration. Head over to this thread on Board Game Geek. Now it's clickable. Love it. And leave us your ideas for a bronze level card. What cool abilities you want to see on the action cards. Try to remember these are bronze level, so they aren't the most powerful cards in the game, but they aren't starter cards either. Don't worry too much about it. We'll take your ideas and put them into a format that flows well in the game. These cards will be inspired by the community. Speaking of listening to the community, here is some of news a lot of you wanted to hear. More character sheets. We're also adding 15 extra character sheets in the game for a total of five sheets per character. Woo! How do you build brand loyalty? Right there. Wow! Designer diary. This is robust. There is so much information in this. James Daly video. Uh, all the best. Fan that looks like a great update. What is holding me back? Maybe my wife. Uh, yeah, I could imagine that this is... Yeah, it's... Because there's been a lot of big Kickstarters launching over the last few weeks. And this one's standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Just sending you some love, James. Just because you're doing great stuff. And just wanted you to know that. Peace, brother. Arkubal. And that's a great comment right there. I get comments like that from time to time on just random YouTube videos where people are just saying stuff. That's fantastic. Because that, that peps you up in your day. That makes you feel good. But it also tickles that algorithm, which is always fantastic. For this couple game, I wasn't enthusiastic about a gray wash. But a wash with different light colors. You got me. Definitely interested in this. Also, thank you for the extra player sheets. New character sheets are awesome. Everything looks so great so far. These are people super excited so there's people super excited here and they're tickling the board game geek algorithm right now by going to that page and, and having ideas that you su su suggest that's awesome go then plus you're sending people to the twitch channel fantastic great looking update and then 1077 comments that is is top notch this launched what three days ago that is delightful i want to just i want to do a little comparison here i'm very curious i want to see what some of the other uh, top projects are and how many comments they have like we're just gonna go because i think all these probably much launched on tuesday this one so 746 more i wouldn't say that's too bad considering they have like six hundred thousand more dollars jurassic world i imagine this one's gonna be yeah 468 comments not nearly 868 so they are crushing it in the comment section they're getting people engaged there's excitement around this project and that's why it's the number three project on kickstarter right now and 
And, and, I, and I feel like it's a perfect storm. They're bringing in the RPG crowd. They're bringing in the board game crowd. They're bringing in the people that like Gloomhaven. It's got a reasonable price. It's a fun ride to go on. Final grade on this one, I think it's going to be pretty high. I'm going to go with an A. Oh, man. It's just start off with that John Gets Games gameplay video, how to play, the pedigree. I'm going to go with an A. Like, I think, I think the only thing that I wasn't a big fan of was just how far I had to go to get to the price points. And wait, wait, let me check out that main image one more time. Let me take out that main image. But I think I'm leaning towards an A. I also am interested. Let's see how they're doing. 2160, 347 Canada, 290. And then we have Montreal. Go big in Montreal. 4,100 returning backers. Um, yeah, I think the only thing I'd like to see... On, yeah, and the player like the time count, the age. But other than that, I'm going to give an A to Tidal Blades 2, Rise of the Unfolder. I thought that was a really... That price being so low hurt, Sean said. Thanks, Forrest. Always great to see this angle on project. The Kickstarter edition, it wasn't available to retail. Okay. Anywho, let me know in the comments below what is your grade on Title Blades 2 Rise of the Unfolder. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button. I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers. Celebrate my 10-year anniversary of making YouTube content. Bye-bye.